I unfortunately still see a lot of Windows XP in a lot of big corporates. You mean because it doesn't receive any updates? No, because how poor do they need to be to still run Windows XP? In terms of security, all Windows is horrible. Welcome to Walter Wallace's security training. Computers are pretty secure by now. I mean, ours aren't, but in general, it's a security fault with the humans. Now, some of you might say, I run Mac, that means I'm safe. I run Arch Linux, that means I'm beyond humans, but that still doesn't mean I'm safe. So let's look at the common attack vectors that people might get fooled into. I like to categorize it into three main categories. Stupidity out of convenience, accidental stupidity, and complete stupidity. Uh, let's start our browser. First thing, beware when you connect to a public Wi-Fi without the proper VPN. Now, let's say you're at an airport. Airport Wi-Fi should be safe, huh? But you don't know who really controls the airport Wi-Fi. Maybe it's a guy with his backpack next to you, carrying a pineapple router in his backpack. But even if it is the airport Wi-Fi, you don't know who's taking control of it. You don't know. Maybe it's me. Probably not. I'm probably at a McDonald's. Let's talk about security updates. Always update your OS to the newest version because hackers are usually far ahead of the competition. When you update your OS to the newest version, you can reduce the time hackers have from a few years to a few months. Unless you use Arch Linux, then you write the patches yourself. Good luck keeping your data secure. Now, if we look at an average company, it doesn't help if some people update to the latest version and some still stay on an old OS. Or if the company runs on top-notch overpriced AWS servers and still maintains some legacy infrastructure. Uh, next attack, use B malware. How do you prevent from this attack? You just don't hire people that are completely retarded. Before you plug in anything into your computer, in fact, just never plug in anything to your computer. And also never download anything. Ah, technology. Just think before you plug in anything into your computer. Same way how you would always think before you put any food into your body. Let's see what this stick can do to our test computer. Hold on. Which account did I rent this on? Oh no. Now, let's talk about a similar attack, but a bit smarter. USB cable trojan. A friend from the Netherlands gave me this. I mean, he didn't give it to me. He tried to spy on me and I just kept the cable because I can charge my iPhone with it. Hold on. Uh, so, USB cable, charger, USB cable, charger, USB cable, charger, USB cable, charger. Uh, for example, I give this to someone who needs a charger, uh, he plugs it into his computer. I distract him with some small talk. You know what triggers emotions. Harley motorbikes, tax evasion, caterpillar shopping. Uh, in this time, a window pops up and the keylogger starts throwing commands at the operating system. Now, the 
Keylogger in this fake keyboard puts the commands on the computer, downloads the data. I say, good fun, good talk, thank you, goodbye. I take the cable, I put it into my computer. Of course, I change the scene first. This USB cable. And I just became the victim. I just became a young, handsome, 60-year-old with two hacked bank accounts. And if that person stored their passwords in the browser, we have access to all the passwords. You don't want to see what's going on in these accounts. You really don't want to see. Oh, gatesandfences.com. That's a good, that's a good website. Uh, anyway, so obviously don't plug in any untrusted device into your computer. Don't store your passwords in your browser. Instead, you should always use a password manager. This is a Joe. He uh, hands me my passwords. But as a normal user, you would of course use a software password manager. One password or last pass, or well, last pass recently got hacked, or key pass. In that password manager, you create long cryptic passwords. Nobody can read or understand, including you, so that it keeps you locked out if you're not at your computer. Ah, <sighs> technology. So how does phishing work? As an attacker, I would be now writing a very urgent email. Uh, I know what triggers emotions. Harley motorbikes. So, uh, maybe it's a uh, free calendar. Maybe it's a free wash. Maybe it's a free gift card. Or maybe it's a free calendar. Merchandise. Free helmet. Or maybe it's a free wash. Or maybe something more unrealistic. Like uh, an urgent model recall. So, we write up our draft for an urgent model recall, fictional scenario. And here we put in our phishing link. It's actually very easy to set up. You just go to domain yeah, cheap yeah, yeah. and- Let's not explain the exact steps. The phishing link you see here, it's not harleydavidson.com. It's harleydavidson.com. So, uh, what happens when a user clicks on that link? Because who can resist a personal email from their Harley dealer? That link, is actually registered by me. Creating such a uh, phishing website is very easy. You just go into the <laughs> select your yeah, yeah, yeah. you want to yeah, imitate yeah. and you'll have your phishing link. Yeah, let's not explain the exact steps. I'm saying this for educational purposes only. So, what happens when a user clicks on that link? I will click on that link. Now, as a user, I log in on that link. Email wwallace at gmail.com. Password Hannah Montana. And now we sign in. Now, when you're logging in, your password is passed through the hacker's website to the actual real Harley Davidson website. So it looks like we're on the real Harley Davidson website. Beautiful. Let's continue. Uh, you think you're logged in safely, but the hacker was able to intercept your data. Now the hacker doesn't care about your horrible, insecure, short, made up password. Because he has the session cookie. He can log in without the whole two-factor authentication mask. Now, I use this method to log into accounts when I don't want to register on every website. I just uh, grab the session from someone. Yeah, we don't promote that. Oh yeah, we can just cut it out. Uh, when it comes to emails, you just need to see it as a zero trust system. When someone sends you an email, by default, you just assume it's fraud. I might have had access. My favorite hack, I remember, 
I remember was uh, when I was 16, I would go to McDonald's and order a Big Mac without the menu plus big fries. Because that was the cheaper option. No, your favorite security app. Oh. It's At the end of the day, it doesn't matter how good your security practices are if you outsource all your work to a third party with weak security. So don't outsource all your security work to Fiverr. Five stars only. Welcome to Walter Wallace's security training.